Hey what's going on guys, this is Andrew Chicken and welcome back to another video. In my last video I suggested the idea of making a tutorial for how to import deadlock models into Blender, and a lot of you guys actually seem to like the idea, so here we are today, making a tutorial on how to import deadlock models into Blender. It's a pretty straightforward process, so let's just get right into it. So the first thing we need to do is download a couple of things that will help us import these models into Blender. The first thing we need to get is the Source2 Viewer, which is a program that will allow us to basically basically search through Deadlock's files for the thing we want, which is of course the character models, and then we can export that in order to import it into Blender later. And the link to this will be in the description down below, and so we can just come on over to the website, download Source2 Viewer, and it'll just download into your downloads folder like that, and it's a pretty simple thing, you literally just launch it. It doesn't have an installation process, there's no folder you need, you can just keep the EXE handy wherever you decide to end up storing it. I just kind of moved mine to the documents folder, but um, yeah, just keep it somewhere safe because you'll need it a lot when it comes to importing and exporting these models. The next thing we need to install is the add-on, which will actually allow us to import the models into Blender itself. And so this is the second link in the description, and uh, it's just a GitHub page here with the uh, a whole bunch of releases here. You'll just want to download the latest release. You're looking for the source io.zip. You don't need the source code, that's not what we're here for, we're just here for this zip. So you click on this, and then it should download it nice and easy. Now we're not quite done yet with installing Source.io because you're, you'll notice it's just a zip here and we need to actually import it into Blender so that way the add-on will work properly. So we need to take the Source.io zip here and we need to just cut it. You can do the Control X command or you can just do cut up here. Regardless, you just need to cut it and then you need to paste it into the plugins folder for your Blender. So you want to navigate over to your documents folder and then the Blender files folder. And if your Blender files folder happens to be somewhere else, then just navigate there, but it should be in your documents folder by default. And so in this Blender Files folder, you want to look for the Plugins folder here. And uh, this should be pretty familiar if you've downloaded any plugins before, but if not, then yeah, just click on this folder and you'll want to paste your new plugin in here like this. So now we have the source IO zip in the plugins folder. You don't want to unzip this. This is just, it's meant to be a zip file. Uh, you just leave it in there like that. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to actually open up our Blender. And once we're in here, we can navigate, edit, preferences up here, and then we are in the add-ons tab right here. It's about in the middle right there. And so we want to install an add-on by clicking up here where it says install, and then we can navigate to our Blender folder uh, in Blender Files, Plugins, and then we can click on the source io.zip and install add-on just like this. And now it should refresh and show you the import export source IO thing right here. And so we just want to, the last thing we need to do is click on this checkbox in order to enable the import export source IO thing. It was a little finicky there for a second. It's a small checkbox, but yeah, make sure this checkbox is checked. And now you should be able to import our files once we actually get them from the source to viewer. And so just to confirm that it's installed properly, you should be able to go to file and then import. And then down here, you should be able to see source engine assets. And if you hover over this, you should be able to see a bunch more options here. If you see this, then you installed it correctly. If not, looks like something went wrong. So now let's open up our Source2 Viewer. This is where we're going to end up finding our files in order to export them so we can import them into Blender later. So I have a bunch of recent files, I'm just going to hide that. But uh, what you'll want to do is you'll want to navigate to Deadlock. This will basically show you the uh, location of every single one of your Valve products on your computer. So I have like Half-Life 2, Portal, Team Fortress 2, Left 4 Dead 2, stuff like that. Um, we're just going to ignore all those. We only want Deadlock, which is right here. So you want to expand that folder by clicking on the arrow and you should see a bunch of different things and you might think oh well easy it's already done look we have hero prefabs abrams archer astro stuff like that this isn't what we're looking for it's actually you have to dig a little bit deeper than that so we need to click on this which is called game citadel pack 01 dir dot vpk the important thing is make sure it says game citadel and not game core so we want to double click on this and this should open up our little thing right here we have a new file directory with a whole bunch of folders and the folder we want to click on and expand here is the models folder so expand that with the arrow there and here we need to go to one final folder hero staging so click on that and now we have a whole bunch of files here a whole bunch of folders for each individual character 
Now, some characters have code names within the code that don't match up to their actual name in the game. So we have a bunch of weird ones like Chrono, which Chrono would actually be Paradox. Um, and so you're just going to have to use context clues, try and think for yourself which character lines up with which code name here, because some of them are a little tricky. Some of them are pretty straightforward. They're like Engineer, that one's obviously McGinnis. So yeah, you're smart enough to figure it out. It's uh, pretty straightforward once you actually know what you're looking for. But um, let's go ahead and import a character. So let's go ahead and grab, oh, I don't know. How about we grab um, Lash? Because Lash is pretty uh, awesome, I guess. So um, we'll want to actually look for the Lash v2 folder instead of the Lash regular folder. Some characters have like work in progress materials and textures and stuff like that. And so you'll usually your best shot is to just go to the latest version, which was usually version two in this case for Lash. And you'll want to look for this Lash v model uh, file right here. This is basically what contains his model. So, uh, this we will want to basically export to a folder, but first we actually have to go and make that folder, and it's very important where you make the folder. So, you'll want to head on over to Steam next, so that way you can open up your deadlock local files. So, come on over here to the gear icon, uh, and then scroll down to manage, and then click on browse local files, just like this. And this should pull up your deadlock folder, so you should have a folder in here called game, and then a folder in here called Citadel. Click on the Citadel folder, and then you'll want to make a new folder called Models. I've already made that folder here, but uh, this folder is actually where you want to download, or rather export, your models to. And the reason we're making the export folder here is because for some strange reason, uh, if you export to somewhere else, like let's just say a random folder in your documents folder, um, you won't actually have the textures import into Blender uh, super easily. This is just a super easy, quick, straightforward method to import the models and the textures all in one fell swoop. It's nice, quick, and clean. So um, yeah, I would make the export folder here, and you can bookmark this if you want, just right click and then pin to quick access to make it so you can come back here frequently later, because it is uh, pretty deep inside your deadlock folder, there's a lot of other folders you have to navigate to, it's just easier if you bookmark it. But now all we have to do is right click on our Lash V model here, and then just export as is, and then we can export that right here. And boom, the file should show up in this models folder right here, lash.vmodel underscore c. And so now we are finally prepared to import the model into Blender. So let's come on over here to our Blender save. We can just delete the default cube. We don't need that. And we can go ahead and import Lash now. So let's go to File, Import, Source Engine Assets, and you'll want to click Source to Model. You see that the extension here, vmodel underscore c, is the same extension that we saw for Lash. So go ahead and click on this, and then navigate to our Models folder here. And I would also recommend bookmarking this in Blender. You can just do Control b to make it a bookmark, and uh, I've already done that here. So let's just go ahead and click on Lash and then Import. And after a couple seconds, uh, oop. come on, Blender, there we go. Well, bam, we have Jacob Lash in the flesh. And if we go ahead and click on this view thing here, whoa, okay, we can see that we have his textures all in here. It's all imported. We have the character, we have the model, we have the textures, and of course, we also have the animation rig. And you'll notice over here on our file explorer, we have a bunch of different things. So we have uh, all these extras from the Christmas skin that we can actually turn off. You can come on over here and just disable these or keep them if you want to um, export his uh, Christmas variant. And uh, you'll also want to make sure you hide those in the render as well. But yeah, the, otherwise this is just, yeah, this is Lash in the flesh. We have a whole bunch of other parts that we can also move around, like the anchor on his back. We have his body separately. We have his glove separately. And so all of this is really nice and customizable. And we can also uh, edit the rig. So if we click on the Lash armature, this right here, uh, and then go into pose mode, you will also be able to basically grab each of the bones and you can rotate them. Some of them don't seem to line up to certain things, so you'll have to play around with it a little bit to find the right one. There we go, we found the head bone. <laughs> so you can move that around. Uh, a lot of these are not going to have special rigs for the eyes, the mouth, etc. Because these are, at the end of the day, unfinished models and characters, uh, Deadlock is still a work in progress game. If you're watching this 
a couple years in the future, hopefully the same method still works, and hopefully you will have the face rigs, but as of right now, we don't have face rigs, so... Yeah, you're just going to have to, I guess, make your own face rig if you want, or just accept the fact that it's not really a possibility at this time. Um, but yeah, that's basically it for importing the model into Blender. And from here, you can tweak your light sources, you can tweak anything that you want to, um, yeah, make it uh, the amazing uh, Deadlock character render that you always wanted. However, before we end off, I actually want to give a few extra tips and tricks for certain characters that are a little finicky. Because uh, not every character in Deadlock is as straightforward as Lash, where you just have a bunch of basic model parts and then a bunch of basic texture parts. Some of them have some extra layers to them because they look a little different. Like Viscous, for example, my favorite character. He's a little strange when you import him into Blender. So let's go ahead and grab his source model here, import him into this file, and you'll notice... Whoa! What the freak is that? Oh, that's not the Viscous I even wanted to export. That's Viscous V2, and by golly, I hope they don't actually add that into the game. Oh god. Anyways, <laughs> here we go. So this is Viscous. Oh boy, this is what we get when we import Viscous into Blender. There's a lot of stuff here to unpack. So we do have, like, the Christmas stuff, which we can go ahead and hide here. It's labeled as Xmas. We have Inflated. Uh, which is basically this giant ball, so we can hide that, and you'll see that we have the um, regular viscous model hidden, tucked away within. And we can actually just move this to the side if we really want to, um, just to have, like, the comparison for a uh, big inflated viscous versus small viscous. But also, you'll notice, his textures are all kinds of wonky. <laughs> what is up with this? So Viscous is one of those characters where you're going to have to learn how to do some basic shader editing in order to make him look better. So I usually like to come down here, uh, click on this little clock icon, and then set this to the shader editor down here. And here we'll be able to see some of Viscous's shaders. So if we just click on the model here, it'll update to the appropriate Viscous shader here, and we can start to edit some of the things. For example, if we turn the alpha down and we actually go on over to the Cycles render engine as opposed to Eevee, uh, we will be able to make Viscous a little bit more transparent in his little dome up here until we realize that, oh wait, he's got a black dome inside. What the heck is that? So we can actually take that uh, glass and we can just hide it because Viscous doesn't look like that anymore. And then all of a sudden, whoa, he's got a face. That's crazy. Okay, so let me return up the alpha. This is basically the outline that they gave him recently. And um, I found kind of a, a way to make him look a little better without that outline in Blender, which is using my own separate shader. But um, regardless, let's just not worry about that right now. So we also have his body right here. And this also we can make a little bit transparent using the alpha channel just to um, make it so you can actually see the exoskeleton. Because in the game itself, you can also see the exoskeleton. So uh, yeah, you just got to play with that a little bit. You might also want to play with some of the roughness values and metallic values manually just because a blender is not the same render engine as uh, you source to. So it's going to feel a little bit different. Now I've gone ahead and opened my actual viscous uh, save that I have over here just to show you what I've done with him. Um, so I have a, a couple different things that I've changed. I manually changed the roughness value down to zero to make him as shiny as possible. I changed the alpha channel for actually a, a couple separate things. I changed the alpha channel for the head uh, to make it 0 0.2, whereas for the body I changed it to make it, uh, where is it? Whoa. Uh, 0.15. So I felt that just different values made sense for different things. Also, he has these spots on his head, and so I changed the emissive textures for that. I basically went down here, and, um, ooh, it's actually a little hard to see behind me. But yeah, I changed this so that the emissive uh, mask here was plugged into a multiply node, and then plugged into the strength node, and then I just set the color to green, so that way we could really see these nice uh, little blobs come through him. And then for the outline effect, I actually went ahead and used my own custom Fresnel sort of thing here to just give him an edge outline right here that's white, um, which I felt looked a little bit better for Blender. It's a technique that I used before, um, and I just modified it for Viscous. It's not really... this. The point of this tutorial isn't to show you that. The point is just to say that for some of these characters, you might need to do a little bit of work, and that means hiding certain parts of their model, like the Viscous glass that we saw earlier, right? This just black ball, we don't want that up there. And um, also uh, changing the alpha channel on some things to make some things that are supposed to be semi-transparent actually properly semi-transparent. 
that's usually what I've had to do for most things that have uh, involved a little bit more work. Viscous is kind of like the biggest exception, where he's got a really unique model, and so you're going to need to um, do some custom stuff to him there. So yeah, hopefully you found this video to be helpful. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe down below for more Deadlock content from me. I know Blender content isn't normally what I do on this channel, but I do work with Blender a lot for my thumbnails, and also just for fun renders that I do on my own free time, and so I figured, hey, uh, maybe I can use my expertise to help other people out on the internet here. So yeah, again, hope this video was helpful, and uh, yeah, with all that being said, thank you guys for watching. I will see you all next time. Peace out.